Hello and welcome to Lecture 3 of MAN 301 Strategic Management. This week we're looking at the internal environment, resources, capabilities and core competencies. It's our third week when we're looking at strategic inputs. So the last week we looked at um, a background to strategic management. We looked at the external environment and the industry environment. So this week we're going to look inside the organization and how the organization's features can lead us to having a sustainable competitive advantage and above average returns. Our objectives are to explain the need for firms to study and understand the internal environment, define value and discuss its importance, describe the differences between tangible and intangible resources, define capabilities and discuss how they are developed, Describe the four criteria used to determine whether resources and capabilities are core competencies. Explain how value chain analysis is used to identify and evaluate resources and capabilities. And finally, to spend some time talking about outsourcing and discuss the reasons for its use, particularly in relation to how it can mean firms gain access to the value chain of other organisations and therefore improve their own performance by focusing on their own core competencies. So objective one, why do firms need to study and understand the internal environment? The goal of strategic management, the goal of the strategic management process that we are discussing in this course is to gain sustainable competitive advantage and above average returns. A sustainable competitive advantage is achieved when a firm has the ability to undertake value creating activities using its unique resources, capabilities and core competencies. There are three parts to having a sustainable competitive advantage. The three factors are managing a portfolio of resources, tangible and intangible resources that the firm owns or can access. The second part is leveraging the firm's unique resources and capabilities, putting to, together to create strategic competitiveness. And finally, by taking a global mindset that will support a holistic analysis of the internal environment, linking it to the external environment, linking it to the op strengths, weaknesses, opportunities and threats that exist to enable it to perform. Our analysis of the internal environment ultimately leads us to identifying the strengths and weaknesses of our organization. This slide, this slide is the most important slide. It's the summary slide, I suppose, for the whole lecture. This slide shows the components of internal analysis leading to strategic competitiveness and competitive advantage. So we start with tangible and intangible resources. Firms can have the same tangible and intangible resources. They can have similar tangible and intangible resources to their competitors. They can have a range of different tangible and intangible resources. Capabilities are what firms use or firms produce by combining tangible and intangible resources to do something. So in a way, tangible and res tangible resources are things and capabilities are what you do. These lead to competencies, core competencies. And those competencies can be identified as core competencies if they are valuable, are rare, are costly to imitate, and a non-substitutable. Valuable, rare, costly to imitate, and non-substitutable. So one component of that enables us to identify, one method to identify whether a competency is a core competency, is if it's valuable, rare, costly to imitate, and non-substitutable. But to utilize our core competencies, to achieve our goals of having core competencies, we need to conduct a value chain analysis and that might mean that we are trying to source 
core competencies from outside of the organization to enhance our value chain. That's called outsourcing. Or we may be focusing on our own core competencies and outsourcing things we don't do as well to such a high quality where there are ways so we can focus on what we do best, our core competencies. Effective utilization of core competencies leads to a competitive advantage and strategic competitiveness. Later in today's discussion, we're going to identify that different combinations of valuable, rare, costly to imitate and non-substitutable can produce different outcomes in competitive advantage and strategic competitiveness. So that's our model of the components of internal analysis leading to competitive advantage and strategic competitiveness. Before we spend some more time on that model, I want to deal with one more issue, and that is the issue of value and its importance. And linked to that, I'm also going to talk about the managerial decisions that lead to value creation or lead to strategic competitiveness and above average returns. Strategic competitiveness and above average returns. A little bit of a tongue tie there, but still, it's either early in the morning or late in the evening that you're listening to this. Could be the afternoon, I suppose. How do we define value? Value is measured by the product's performance characteristics and its attributes. But value is not from the perception of the company. Value is not from the perception of some objective measure, like a reviewer. Value is perceived from the perception of the customers. It's something about the goods and services that the company has created, that the customer is willing to pay for. Firms provide value to customers that is superior to the value provided by other competing firms. So customer value and the perception of customer value by the customer is the source of the firm's potential to earn an average, if the value is perceived as equal, or above average returns. A firm's ability to create value is based on the decisions its managers make about how you bundle and leverage resources and capabilities together to produce core competency that in turn leads to strategic competitiveness and above average returns. A firm's competencies in creating value are only one aspect of that goal of achieving strategic competitiveness and above average returns. The other two aspects are the industry and the competitive environments, which we've talked about earlier in this course. So the combination of the understanding the firm's internal competencies, internal analysis, and understanding the industry and competitive environments as they sit within the general environment should drive the selection of strategies by the managers so that they can achieve above average returns and strategic competitiveness, a sustainable competitive advantage. So what influences managers' decisions about resources and capabilities and competencies? Well, firstly, the manager themselves influences their decisions, the competence, the skills, the knowledge, the characteristics of the managers. Because decisions that are made about strategy and specifically decisions that are made about how to allocate resources, how to combine resources and capabilities, what are and are not core competencies are not routine decisions. They have ethical and competitive implications. So to make effective decisions related to identifying value or related to an internal analysis, managers must have courage, self-confidence, integrity. The capacity to deal with uncertainty, because quite often the combination of rare, valuable, hard to imitate, and non-substitutable, and the concept of what customer values may not be very clear, and how the resources and how the capabilities 
combine together to achieve a competency. It may not be clear. The capacity to deal with uncertainty and complexity is important. The willingness to have them also to hold themselves and others accountable for their work to achieve goals is another managerial characteristic that's necessary for good internal analysis. So that's a set of skills or characteristics that managers might need. They also need not a set of intangible knowledge, a group of intangible knowledge characteristics. They need to deal with uncertainty they, because uncertainty comes from having new proprietary technology, changing, rapidly changing economic and political trends, the transformation of social values and the shift in customer demands. Having a new product, a new service, a new good is good that's often protected by a trademark or intellectual property or, or um, some, type of, some type of legal um, constraint is a new proprietary technology. It's intellectual property. Intellectual property is not certain. The outcome of using a particular piece of intellectual property is not certain. If you think about the difference in the economic environment and the political environment now compared with three months ago before COVID-19, that's a rapidly changing economic and political trend. Social trends can transfer, transform the attitudes and values of people quite quickly. And there can be rapid changes in customer demands, all of which make it difficult to understand the relationship between the resources and capabilities that you have and how they might lead to competencies that are in turn valued by customers and therefore lead to you having sustainable competitive advantage. So let's move on now to objective three. In objective three, we're going to discuss just briefly the differences between tangible and intangible resources. And in that discussion, I want to move you just a little bit away from thinking about these things in accounting terms. Most of you have done accounting. Most of you have used these terms before. I want to bring you a little bit more in line about thinking of these things in strategic terms. So I'm going to give some examples of what these resources are. Not a comprehensive list of examples, just some. So, resources are inputs into a firm's production process. Firm's production process can be about producing goods, can be about producing services, can be about producing some combination of those two things. How you marshal your resources together, how you combine your resources, leads you to having a capability to do something. Resources can be based on individual characteristics. They can be based on social characteristics. They can be an organizational phenomenon. But just having resources alone isn't enough to yield a competitive advantage. The competitive advantage is created through the unique bundling of resources. So you could take two airlines that start effectively with the same access to resources and how they operate how they combine those resources leads them to having completely different competitive situations. Look at the difference between Qantas and Virgin. They have very similar access to inputs. Qantas does have some differences that have arisen historically because it's, it's the larger carrier. It's had this history of being the Australian flag carrier. But its ability to use its resources and capabilities to create core competencies is different and more effective than the way that Virgin has used its resources and capabilities to create its core competencies and they're valued differently by customers. A firm's tangible resources are things like its financial resources, the ability to borrow, other sources of capital, maybe the ability to generate internal funds. It's organizational resources, it's reporting structure, it's planning, it's controlling, it's coordinating systems, it's business processes. 
its physical resources, the sophistication of the firm's plant and equipment, its access to raw material, for example, and its technological resources, which can include things like patents, and trademarks, and copyrights, and trade secrets. It's technology. The difference broadly between a trade secret and a copyright, trademark, and patent is a trade secret is something you want to try to keep secret forever because patents, trademarks, and copyrights have to be registered somewhere. So supposedly the re recipe for Coca-Cola is a trade secret. It's not going to be patented. It's not going to be copyrighted. It's not going to be trademarked. Now, do Coca-Cola copyright and trademark other things? Sure they do, but they have this trade secret of its recipe. Intangible resources are the things that lie within the people in the organisation, the human resources, knowledge, trust, managerial capabilities, organisational routines, possibly organisational systems. Innovative resources, ideas, the scientific capabilities, the capacity to innovate. Sometimes with innovative resources, we also include the capacity to source other innovations from outside the organisation. And finally, reputational resources. The reputation of the customers, the brand name. I mean, I think I've asked this in another lecture. Very few people here think they own a Lucky Gold Star product. Who'd own a Lucky Gold Star product? The fact that it sounds like Lucky Gold Star makes it sound cheap. But Lucky Gold Star is LG. And many people own LG products. And the LG brand has a far better image than Lucky Gold Star. Apple has a different brand position than Samsung or Huawei. Toyota and Kia and Hyundai have different brand positions based on different reputational resources. Mercedes has a different reputational resource through its brand name, through its perception of product quality, durability and reliability. So reputation with customers is an important reputational resource, but also reputation with suppliers. Because if your suppliers perceive you as being efficient or effective or supportive or the type of company that you can have mutually beneficial interactions and relationships with, they're likely to bring their innovations to you first. So, they, so you get the advantages of their value chain. Their core competencies. The second part of this discussion is capabilities. Capabilities are the firm's capacity to deploy resources that have been purposefully integrated to achieve a desired end state. We're suggesting in this model of the strategic management process that the way you bring resources together is based on purpose, it's based on some managerial decision-making making process. Now, truthfully, sometimes resources come together and produce a competitive advantage for a whole range of reasons, some of which are historical, some of which are accidental, some of which are opportunistic. But once they are performing in a particular way, you need to keep them integrated to achieve your desired end state. Over time, resources can merge through complex interactions between tangible and intangible resources, and capabilities are formed through that, sometimes based on developing and carrying out and exchanging information or the knowledge held by the people who work in your organisation, the, the firm's human capital. And sometimes resources and capabilities come together. To be, resources produce capabilities because it's related to specific actions in R&D or in marketing or in production processing. So let's take a break now. And after that break, we'll come back and we'll look at the four criteria that defer, determined determine if resources and capabilities are core competencies.